Hello Year 6 and welcome to today's reading lesson. Now, we are going to be looking at the next two chapters in the book uh, and looking at inference and retrieval skills. Okay, so let's get into the text. Hello. So like I said, we are retrieving and inferring information as we look through these two chapters. So, the first chapter we are going to look at is called Cheese Touch. Now, two questions that I want you to be looking for and you're going to write these in your book as we come to my hair is bonk, isn't it? Um, I did that. Look at the state of that. I'll try and get it cut before I come back to school by Megan. We'll see. So, two questions. What word tells us that Tristan quickly moves his hand away from Oggy? So there's an instant where Tristan moves his way hand away. How do we know he did it quickly? And then why does Oggy feel like he is old, mouldy cheese? Okay, two questions for you to be thinking about. When you see them in the text, you can pause and and get them down, but I want those two questions done, into, done in your book, okay? In full sentences. Right, let's read. The cheese touch. I noticed not too long ago that even though people were getting used to me, no one would actually touch me. I didn't realize this at first because it's not like kids go around touching each other all that much in middle school anyway. But last Thursday in dance class, which is like, my least favourite class. Mrs. Atanabi, the teacher, tried to make Zamaina Chin be my dance partner. Now, I've never actually seen someone have a panic attack before, but I heard about it, and I'm pretty sure Zamaina had a panic attack about that second. She got really nervous and turned pale and literally broke into a sweat within a minute. And then she came up with some lame excuse about really having to go to the bathroom. Anyway, Mrs. Atanabi let her off the hook because she ended up not making anyone dance together. Then yesterday in my science elective, which is just like his lesson, we were doing this cool mystery powder investigation where we had to classify a substance as an acid or as a base. Everyone had to heat their mystery powders on a heating plate and make observations. So we were all huddled around the powders with our notebooks. Now, there were eight kids in the elective and seven of them were squished together on one side of the plate, while one of them, me, had loads of room on the other side. So of course I noticed this, but I was hoping Miss Rubin wouldn't notice this because I didn't want her to say something. But of course she did notice this, and of course she did say something. Guys, there's plenty of room on that side. Tristan, Nina, Nino, go over there, she said. So Tristan and Nino scooted over to my side. Tristan and Nino have always been okay, nice to me. I want to go on record as saying that. Not super nice, but like they go out of their way to hang out with me, but okay nice, like they say hello to me and talk to me, like normal. And they didn't even make a face when Miss Rubin told them to come on my side, which a lot of kids do when they think I'm not looking. Anyway, everything was going fine until Tristan's mystery powder started melting. He moved his foil off the plate just as my powder began to melt too, which is why I went to move mine off the plate. And then my hand accidentally bumped his hand for like a fraction of a second. Tristan jerked his hand away so fast he dropped his foil on the, other, on the floor while also knocking everyone else's foil off the heating plate. Answer to question one here. Tristan, yelled Miss Rubin. But Tristan didn't even care about the spilled powder on the floor or that he ruined the experiment. What he was most concerned about was getting to the lab sink to wash his hands as fast as possible. That's when I knew for sure that there was this thing about touching me at preacher prep. I think it's like the cheese touch in Diary of a Wimpy Kid. The kids in that story were afraid they'd catch the cooties if they touched the old mouldy cheese on the basketball court. At preacher prep, I'm the old mouldy cheese. And that's the end of the chapter. Rubbish, isn't it? It's rubbish how horrible some kids can be sometimes. So, you hopefully will have answered these two questions. So, what word tells us that Tristan quickly moves his hand away from Oggy? And then, uh, why does Oggy feel like he is old mouldy cheese? I think two fairly straightforward answers there, but can you write the answers for them? I would pause now and then do that and then unpause when you're ready to carry on. So, the next chapter we are gonna read is called Costumes. And what I want you to do as we're doing this is think about what do the costume choices of Charlotte, Jack and Julian tell us about their personality? So as we're reading through, 
you might want to make a little note of which costumes they choose and then you're going to be thinking about how does that link to their personality. Okay, costumes. For me, Halloween is the best holiday in the world. It even beats Christmas. I get to dress up in a costume. I get to wear a mask. I get to go around like every other kid in a mask and nobody thinks I look weird. Nobody takes a second look. Nobody notices me. Nobody knows me. I wish every day could be Halloween. We could all wear masks all the time. Then we could walk around and get to know each other before we get to see what we actually look like under the masks. When I was little, I used to wear an astronaut helmet everywhere I went. To the playground, to the supermarket, to pick beer up from school, even in the middle of summer. Though it was so hot, my face would sweat. I think I wore it for a couple of years, but I had to stop wearing it when I had my eye surgery. I was about seven, I think. And then we couldn't find the helmet after that. Mum looked everywhere for it. She figured that it had probably ended up in Grand's attic. And she kept meaning to look for it, but by the time I, by, but by then I'd gotten used to not wearing it. That made no sense. I'd gotten used to not wearing it. I have pictures of me in all my Halloween costumes. My first Halloween I was a pumpkin. My second I was Tigger. My third I was Peter Pan. My dad dressed up as Captain Hook. My fourth I was Captain Hook. My dad dressed up as Peter Pan. My fifth I was an astronaut. My sixth I was Obi Wan Kenobi. My seventh I was a clone trooper. My eighth I was Darth Vader. My ninth I was the Bleeding Scream, the one that has fake blood oozing out all over the skull mask. Blech. This year I'm going to be Boba Fett. Not Boba Fett the kid in Star Wars Episode 2, Attack of the Clones, but Boba Fett the man from Star Wars Episode 5, The Empire States Back. Mum searched everywhere for the costume, but couldn't find one in my size. So she bought me a Django Fett costume, since Django was Boba's dad, and wore the same armour, and then painted the armour green. She did some other stuff to make it look too, look worn too. Anyways, it looks totally real. Mum's good at costumes. Uh, pause. We, uh, we talked about what Boba Fett looked like in a previous lesson. I think it was Monday, maybe Tuesday. In Homeroom, we all talked about what we were going to be for Halloween. Charlotte was going as Hermione from Harry Potter. Jack was going as Wolfman. I heard that Julian was going as Django Fett, which was a weird coincidence. I don't think he liked hearing that I was going as Boba Fett. On the morning of Halloween, so that will help you with those questions, but don't do it yet. On the morning of Halloween, Via had this big crying meltdown about something. Via's always been so calm and cool, but, but this year she's had a couple of these kinds of fits. Dad was late for work and was like, Via, let's go, let's go. Usually dad is super patient about things, but not when it comes to him being late for work. And his yelling just stressed Via out even more. And then she started crying louder. So mum told dad to take me to school and that she'd deal with Via. Then mum kissed me goodbye quickly before I even uh, put on my costume and disappeared into Via's room. Oggy, let's go now, said dad. I have a meeting I can't be late for. I haven't put on my costume yet. So put it on already, five minutes, I'll meet you outside. I rushed to my room and started to put on the Boba Fett costume. But all of a sudden, I didn't feel like wearing it. I'm not sure why, maybe because it had all these belts that needed to be tightened and I needed someone's help to put it on. Or maybe it was because it still smelled a little bit like paint. All I knew was that it was a lot of work to put the costume on and dad was waiting and we could get super impatient if I made him late. So at the last minute, I threw on the ble Bleeding Scream costume from last year. It was such an easy costume, just a long black robe and a big white mask. I yelled goodbye from the door on my way out, but mum didn't even hear me. I thought you were going as Django Fett, said dad when I got outside. Boba Fett? Whatever, said dad. This is a better costume anyway. Yeah, it's cool, I answered. And that is the end of the chapter. So your task year six is, firstly, I want you to tell me which costume each of those characters were wearing. Okay, you should remember that if you can't just flip back a little bit. And then this important bit about describe what the costumes tell us about that character's personality. So for example, if I said, right, we're having a dress up day at school and I came dressed as a clown, what would that tell you about my personality? How does me, as in Kia Sinister, why is me dressing up as a clown matching my personality a little bit, okay? And I would say that's because I always like to think I'm a bit of a joker 
try and make people laugh, probably fail miserably most of the time. So I dress up as a clown because clowns are there to make people laugh. Okay, so what is it about uh, Charlotte Jackson Julian's costumes that kind of tell us a little bit about their personality? See you six. What I'm expecting to see when you hand this in is the two questions from the chapter before about uh, uh, the hand moving away quickly and about the old moldy cheese. And then this one where you tell us what the characters are wearing and then how that shows up their personality. And that, year six, is today's reading lesson. And I will see you in tomorrow's reading lesson for a big, a big end of the week. Okay, big chapter, next chapter. One of the most memorable chapters in the book. Okay, I will see you in the next lesson. Maybe reading, but probably not. Goodbye.